Hey yo, peace, peace, peace. What's going on? This is Kurt and I'm back for another video. The topic of my video today is self-realization versus enlightenment. And I'm very happy about the topic of the video today because it's been something that I've been meaning to explain throughout my entire YouTube journey. And I've touched on it uh, in parts and bits and parts, but I never really sat down and laid the entire foundation of what the difference between enlightenment and self-realization is. And speaking to people, doing consultation, speaking to friends into spirituality, reading a lot of material, watching a lot of videos, I'm like, oh, there's a majority of us that don't actually grasp the concept of enlightenment versus self-realization. And what that creates is that creates false expectations about spirituality. And I'm here to tell you today, there is a major difference between a self-realized individual and an enlightened individual. So here I proceed with Batman as always. You were a kid. You pick up Batman. You immerse yourself in the limitations of Batman, of his physical, mental, spiritual limitations. You take on the limitations of Gotham City as well. But remember, you are the absolute, the child's mind that is playing. So how can Batman, dreamed up by you, Contemplate the absolute, which is the mind of the child. How can you limit yourself to the laws of Gotham City? How can a dream, which can be symbolically equated to one synaptic connection amongst trillions, contemplate the absolute? Is it really of incidence if Batman is now astral traveling, balanced his chakras, or even has all the psychic powers possible. Listen to this part. Even if Batman becomes now becomes a god to himself and per the opinion of the entire Gotham City, it is still within the illusion that you are Batman. The subtle discernment that must be applied to this matter is this. The first step is realizing that you are the absolute, the mind of the child that is trapped in the game. Because now you realize that you're the absolute trapped within the limitations of Gotham City, you now spontaneously develop some of those psychic abilities because they are part of the vision of the absolute that is trapped in limitation. However, those abilities, those psychic powers, those chakras, those walking through walls are not to be coveted and are of no value in and of themselves. Meaning that me or me as Batman, even if you become a god, it does not mean that you are self-realized. Self-realization is getting the absolute, your mind, the mind of the child, out of every single dimension. From the first dimension, to the fourth dimension, to the fifth dimension, to the sixth, on and on leaving all dimensions all together. That's why an enlightened being can be a fifth dimensional being. Compared to someone in the third dimension, he has a level of light. He has access to a certain level of light. Compared to him, a being in the seventh dimension has access to a more subtle body. But the reality is, 
And this is where you have to understand. This is the, the key, the key matter. In any dimension, you have a center. And as long as you operate from a center, it does not matter how subtle your center is. Even if you're a 13th dimension being, if you have a center, you are still within the illusion or an illusion. So enlightenment at any degree does not suppose self-realization. So that means that I take a farmer, smokes every day, smokes his cigars, drinks his liquor, uh, eats whatever. This farmer who has never practiced any spiritual activity, but spontaneously he understands that everything and all is simply a game. It is an illusion. He is a self-realized man. His emotions, his mind, and the mind of the child, which is the absolute, no longer takes part in, it, in the game. So what he's essentially doing, he's just serving his time. Meaning if his body had a time span of living of 70 years, he will live within the game, within the illusion for 70 years, but then he will go back to, I don't want to use the word, uh, let's call it, he will go back to the overworld, the world of the real, the world of the true. And this is why you have to understand, and I'm not trying to say no God name specifically, because I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to be for no gods, but not all gods are self-realized. A lot of gods are not self-realized entities. What does that mean? It means that self-realization automatically produces the effect of a certain level of enlightenment. But enlightenment doesn't always suppose self-realization. You can reach the eighth dimension. You can reach the ninth dimension. You could be walking on air. You could be walking on water. You can be able to read people's mind. You could be able to call the sun. You could be able... That does not mean you're self-realized. Because remember, Gotham City, which is the third dimension, is underneath Gotham City 4.0, which is the fourth dimension. On and on and on. But where are we? We are still trapped or we are still within the confines of the mind of the child that is playing the game. So you are still in the game. The game is the game of me or of I. But whether your I is the I of a Christian or it's the I of a God or the ego of a God or the individuality of a God it does not matter. It is the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong. The reason why we seek light and why we seek enlightenment is that the more or the closer you get to light, the closer or the further apart you get away from the lower, the quote unquote, lower natures, lower habits. But those, but getting to the certain level doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to give up the life of a God. What, what am I trying to say? So you leave, you were living in the third dimension, the third dimension as Batman. And now you go to the eighth dimension as Batman. You, you're living in the eighth dimension. You can do whatever you want. You can get whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. So you're thinking, this is it. This is the absolute. This is everything that is great. But you still have desires. Even though your desires are very subtle. Nonetheless, 
they are the result of a center and anything that keeps you in a circular motion anything that has a center has an ego and that means you are not self realized because to self realize to the self realized being the entirety of all the dream has no meaning he has no preference this over this or this over this it's all the same to him it's an illusion so a quick explanation to create a picture on a screen you need a coder in his mind his imagination to code information into the computer to generate these images then you need people to have a consensus to agree on the meaning and the worth of those images we call life which are relative you have to have awakened the mind of the cosmic coder within the truly awakened or self realized coder doesn't fall for any images on the screen because he knows they are the result of an intent who coded them now listen all universes are the results of a coding the awakened one is trying to get out of phenomenon period he doesn't care if it's the 4th the 5th the 6th he's trying to get out of images he sees himself in the reality of being trapped quote unquote trapped by a coder and he wants to get out of all of that so he is not absorbed by any of the images on the screen and he does not refer to any of the images to validate or assess his self worth that means that once you are self realized the events that you see the sights that you see in the third dimension it's a tree it's a beautiful woman it's a pile of cash it's a it's a big following in the eighth dimension in the seventh dimension it might be a talking tree it might be a goddess it might be this it might be that but once you are self realized you realize that all of it is a coding these are images so when you're watching an anime or when you're watching dragon ball z whether goku is in this dimension or in this other galaxy it was the creator of the show who drew the images who coded them so essentially every dimension is nothing but a dot that is moving and we give value to the different dimensions based on the density and the feelings that they produce within us not realizing that us is none other than the imagination of the child within Gotham City or within the Dragon Ball universe or within any universe but the awakened one or the part of me the self realized one extracts his entire attention from any and all universes they all mean nothing to him or to her so now with that said i want to give you guys books that will help you understand the distinction between enlightenment and self realization so the first book is i am that by sri nazar gadatta maharaj s r i n i s a r g a d a t t a maharaj m a h a r a j the other book is called 
the garland of the guru saying by Sri Muru Ganar. S R I M U R U G A N A R. The other book is called The Path of Sri Ramana Maharshi by Sri Sadhu Om. S R I S A D H U O M. The other the other book is called The Way of the Bird by Ranjit Maharaj. R A N J I T M A H A R A J. The other book is called The Secret Supreme. This is an excellent book by Swami Lakmanju. Swami S W A M I L A K S H M A N J double O. And which one is the other one? Did I forget another one? Yeah, I got it. so the way of the bird. Okay, so when it comes to enlightenment, every action and everything you do can cause enlightenment. The nine laws of Tahuti, because there are nine laws of Tahuti, there's not seven laws of Tahuti. Actually, the laws of Tahuti or the seven laws of Tahuti are a dragon riddle. Once you're able to extract the secret within the seven laws of Tahuti, you are, you're able to unlock the eighth law of Tahuti. And once you're able to unlock the eighth law of Tahuti, you will go and unlock the ninth law of Tahuti. So the nine laws of Tahuti are related to enlightenment, not necessarily self realization so every action every breath practice every yoga every sexual alchemy every um, qigong everything you do spiritually the magic the dark side all of that can cause enlightenment this is related to enlightenment but nothing you do can cause self realization no action can cause self realization because self realization is the background of every single phenomenal universe self realization is my mom calling me and say hey come eat so what i do i draw batman and when i draw batman all the universes which were sustained by my mind, my attention, my imagination ceased to exist. So nothing you do can cause self-realization. One, we had the we have the privilege of having certain master, not only master teachers, but master practitioners who are able to balance both self-realization and enlightenment one of them is bobby hemmet and a lot of the things that bobby hemmet was teaching us he was the backdrop of his teachings was was self-realization and to help you or at least to extract your mind and your quote unquote lower nature from the fears and from the attachments and from the desires he was giving you certain exercises certain practice certain material to contemplate on to be reach a certain level of enlightenment but ultimately self realization is an understanding it is an understanding beyond words it's not something that you trigger it's something you perceive and you understand but again it's not an understanding within words because self realization is beyond cause and effect you can't cause it so i'm not going to speak too much on self realization but definitely what i am that with the garland of the guru saying with the teachings of sri ramana maharshi with the teachings 
of Ranjit Maharaj with the teachings of Swami Lakmanju, you will be able to assess for yourself what is the difference between self-realization and enlightenment. Every form of enlightenment does not cause self-realization, but every form of self-realization will require some form of enlightenment. All right. So that was the video for today. Comment, share, like, and subscribe. Peace.